has the power to pierce the hearts and minds of viewers everywhere as the stories behind the canvas come to life. These stories teach lessons about social justice and injustice, historical battles and pastimes in multiple time periods. Art has undergone significant change throughout the centuries as different periods known as the ages have ruled and reigned. A popular artistic age known as the Dutch Golden Age spanned during the 17th century, most specifically after the conclusion of the Eighty Years' War. During this time, the Dutch were seeking independence from Spain to be recognized as the Dutch Republic and the Southern Netherlands. With the Treaty of Munster in 1648, a half a century of war and conflict was resolved, and Spain removed its presence. With a new look on life, many Dutch citizens set out to explore the vast lands they now could consider their own. Solomon van Roosdale was a Golden Age painter born in Narden in 1602. He was the uncle of later popular artist Jacob van Roosdale. From an early age, he was thrust into the artistic realm when his father insisted him and his brother attend school to learn Latin and medicine. That did not play out in their father's favor as both young men became landscape painters instead. Specializing Ruisdale or trickling water through a dell after their name, landscapes in the presence of water became the most popular for Solomon. In 1649, shortly after the Treaty of Munster, marking newfound freedom of the Dutch Republic, Solomon painted river landscape with fairy. This masterpiece included scenes that he may have seen while traveling amongst other Dutch settlers. The cattle, the wagons, and the boats show the provision and optimism that the Dutch had. The fantastical element of the castles in the background provide an element of symbolism as the people could now be their own kings and queens in their own land, free of Spanish opposition. In 1930, Jock Houtsticker, a prominent dealer of old master paintings in Amsterdam, acquired River Landscape with Ferry from a cell in London. He had been a fan of Roosdale's work for quite some time. The Dutch landscape had struggled to be understood by the popular majority in the recent years. But Goodsticker was so interested in the work of Roosdale that he organized an exhibition to display the artist's work. River Landscape with Ferry was showcased. In 1940, as the Nazi party was emerging, Houtsticker and his family knew that staying in Amsterdam was not an option. Just days before the Nazis invaded the Netherlands, Houtsticker and his family fled to London. Tragically, before reaching the safe shores of the London Harbor, Houtsticker passed away. Due to the rushed departure of him and his family, he was forced to leave many of his over 1,400 pieces of artwork back in Amsterdam. The Nazis, in their thirst for power and wealth, looted the impressive gallery. Reichs Marshal Hermann Göring, Adolf Hitler's second-in-command, was eventually given ownership of the river landscape with Ferry, as well as other several incredible pieces. With the help of the Monuments Men, the painting was recovered and returned to the Dutch authorities in 1946, at the conclusion of the war. Despite years of protest by Houtsticker's widow, Desiree, the painting was chosen not to be returned to the family by the Dutch Recuperation Commission. It instead was placed on view at the Rijksmuseum in Amsterdam in 1960. It was not until 2006 that the artwork was repatriated to the Houtsticker heirs with the help of a special restitution committee. Upon receiving the painting, the family decided to sell it to the National Gallery of Art, where it has been on display since 2007. A question and answer form took place upon the return of the Houtsticker art to his family heirs in 2006. This form took place at the Contemporary Jewish Museum. The family was given the opportunity to share the incredible stories of their beloved grandfather. It took just two months for my grandparents to lose virtually everything they had to Reichsmarschall Hermann Goering and the Nazis. But the efforts to recover what was lost have outlasted the lives of Jacques Daisy and my dad, Ado. But on May 10, 1940, everything changed. Their lives took a tumultuous turn as the Nazis invaded the Netherlands. Jacques, Daisy, and my father were at their country house, Ostermeer, on the day of the invasion. 
They stayed there as long as they felt they safely could, finally leaving on May 13th to drive into Amsterdam. Some precautions had been taken, and Daisy brought a handbag filled with jewelry, some money, and their passports. Once they reached Amsterdam, it was clear that they would have to flee the Netherlands, and Jacques' most valuable assets, his approximately 1,400 artworks, had to be left behind. River Landscape with Ferry portrays a significant sense of pride. It was the Dutch who, at the conclusion of the war, took back all that was rightfully theirs. It was Roosdale who felt a true sense of accomplishment in showing the beauty of all he was experiencing in a newfound Dutch Republic. We are grateful he chose to express this in his art. It was Jock Hoodsticker who, having a deep love for visual art, gave this painting and many others a place to call home. His pride in the art he owned penetrated through history, even after he was gone. It was the love of a family to fight for ownership of what meant so much to them, their love for their grandfather having a direct correlation with their love for his art. It was the sense of obligation that the National Gallery of Art felt to show off a piece with such cultural value. Hitler in his short reign strived to form a model country based on his ideals and satisfactions. This meant, in the art realm, any styles that he did not associate with were hunted down for destruction or gloated ownership, such as in the case of Hermann Goring. Art and its true power persist to shine through the darkness that often attempts to surround it. Stories are told that often teach life lessons. If we choose to listen, we might just learn something.